Hello and welcome to my deep guide and the last Q&A video of the year 2023. So I want to thank you guys for all participating in the Q&A uh, videos, especially with the questions that are actually quite insightful and uh, hopefully useful for a lot of other users. Um, this time you will probably see a light motif here and it's mainly because the Supernote A6X uh, video has now well over a hundred comments and uh, yeah there are a, a lot of valid questions there so a lot of the questions in this video are gonna be in regards to the Supernote as a platform or the Supernote A6X2 but there's some other stuff as well pretty useful so yeah stick around let's dig in and the first question is thanks for all the great videos for the next Q&A will uh, with the books update 3.5 where you can add a new page in a PDF if you sync the PDF using autosync so that you can access it on other devices does the PDF internal linking still work you showed it uh, for on the same device just curious since uh, I share MDO across two books devices well um, this uh, depends of course if you just uh, yeah, add a uh, new page and you export that by using the share. So you can just long press and then you can share and then export the document that way. Then of course it works. Then it's a PDF and all the hyperlinks are preserved and the new pages are there and the new content is there. Um, the question regarding synchronization, automatic synchronization using, um, yeah, the books sync. Well, that's a little bit different because for example, uh, I've tested it out and it actually doesn't work and it's a little bit strange. So let's synchronize this one first. So yeah, let's sync it. And, um, and let's see actually if, uh, if it's consistently not doing what it's supposed to do let's see nope okay so the way it should work this is like a two-part test so uh, this would be from tab X right so that's the new entry that should appear here but what I'm also gonna do is I'm going to uh, add a blank page right so let's add a blank page yes Okay, so that's that. I think I have added accidentally two of them, I believe. Yes, there's two pages. Uh, apropos, people say like, oh, too bad that you can't delete pages. Who says that you can't? It's just in the good old books uh, fashion, it's completely hidden away. So you, what I would suggest is that you add the preview icon here, but you can also access the preview from here. So the way to delete pages is you go to preview um, here and then you just select the page that you want to delete. Not just a single press but you actually have to do a long press. So let's say that I want to delete. Oh, he's really getting weird. I guess you have to tap on the checkbox itself yes on the checkbox so yeah you select the page that you want to delete so in my case I want to keep one but I want to delete this one so I just delete it that's it and that's it so yes of course that you can delete added pages or existing pages um, so in this one I'm going to now just add uh, some text here there we go um, uh, is that out of frame? Yeah, there we go. Now we're in frame. Sorry. Um, so when I exit, so I'm going to go back to this page and when I exit, okay, uh, I think just a second. This is kind of strange. He was supposed to ask me. Ah, okay. So let me just, uh, not go home, but actually let's go back he should save, there we go. So you have to back, now he's gonna synchronize. That's interesting, so if you just go straight to home, this actually stays open in the background, but if you go back, then it closes and then it will trigger the synchronization. And as you can see, as soon as it's synchronized, this one is now saying, hey, I think that there's been some changes and it changes to the cloud icon telling you that there has been a change. So once you open it, it's going to tell you, hey, you need to synchronize. Once I synchronize, it's going to first save and then going to load. 
Um, so that takes a little bit of time, depending on how big of a document you have and how much data it has to store. And there we go, from tab X is added, but there are no blank pages that synchronize across the devices. So unfortunately, the books sync, um, yeah, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't support the adding of new pages, which is, again, just another example of, yeah, uh, how sloppy implementation and how incomplete the implementation is of books features in, in, in there. Yeah, just lack of details. I mean, yeah, we added a new page. There you go. It can't have a template and it doesn't synchronize. Whoop -de -doo. Uh, next one is, I'm very curious, how does it feel to write on, it's in regards to the Super Note A6X2, compared to the Note Air 3C? And uh, yeah, the answer to that question is not an easy one. And it's, it's, it's an answer that I've been trying to get to for the past couple of days. Um, the way that I would characterize writing on the uh, Note Air... 3C is that it's very kind of uh, soft and giving. I don't get the sense of hardness, right? And that, that I think it has a lot to do with this thinner glass that they are using. So if I use regular felt pen tips like this one, which is heavily used, um, this feels very comfortable, right? I have the right uh, amount of friction, it doesn't slide or slip, and it's, it doesn't give me too much resistance. It's very nicely balanced. If I do write with this pen on, this is the Heart of Metal pen, on the Supernote A6X, this feels different. So, as always, Supernote always feels different. So, Supernote A6X and A5X with the Feelrite 1, they felt different to other devices. Feelrite 2 still feels different to other devices. It is a lot more paper-like, definitely, especially because you get a lot of roughness, uh, the tactile feel on the hand that's resting, uh, resting on the device, right? But the first two impressions that I've gotten when I was writing with this is that there is a sense of hardness. Now, somebody will say like, oh, well, is it glass-like? That's the weird part. It's not glass-like. It doesn't feel like you're writing on glass because I don't think that there's a glass panel here. Um, uh, I'm not sure, I'm still waiting for a response and a confirmation from Rata, but I think that this is still plastic. Uh, that's how it feels, at least. Um, but the hardness, there is a certain sense of hardness. Now, that makes perfect sense, because here I'm using a hard ceramic nib. So, if I use the same hard ceramic nib in right here, I get the same type of hardness, and this is the second part, slipperiness. So this nib is very much rounded, um, and it's very hard, and it's very slippery. That's what's giving it super level of precision. Super level of precision. And if I compare the same type of harder nib, ceramic nib, on both of these, by the way, I do not recommend that you use this pen or this nib on screens like this, uh, because over time the ceramic is harder than the surface of the screen, and you will cause damage. Now, just for some testing, that's fine. But for regular use, absolutely not. Um, but this is just for testing purposes how they compare for writing. And if I'm using the same type of thing, then I prefer the Feel Write 2 in the combination with this one. However, if I uh, uh, compare the Heart of Metal 2 on Feel Write 2 
versus my Samsung S6 Lite with a really heavily used soft felt nib on the Note 8 3C, I prefer this feel. Now, what happens? Do I prefer the pen and the soft nib or do I prefer the screen or do I just simply prefer the combination? So, let's see how is it to use the pen on this one and it's it just comes down to the pen uh, so the thing that i'm reacting most to for the writing feel and sensation is basically the nibs themselves that they're using hard ceramic nib versus soft felt nib harder ceramic nib will give you a harder and slightly more slippery feel this will have more friction and will be softer makes perfect sense however you can see the difference here this ceramic nib will give you a lot more precision as opposed to the soft felt nib so it comes down to you how they feel they feel really really good and kind of nice paper like i I, pre I like both of the feels but they are different and unfortunately i don't have enough yet to kind of tell you exactly how different it feels except that there's a big impression that I think that this one's a little bit rougher but I need to do a little bit more measurements and things like that but generally speaking how does it feel with the same pen a little bit softer so a6 x2 is a tiny tiny bit has more give because of the fill right too that actually gives uh, has a little bit more thickness and a little bit more give than the flex in the glass here but it's a very very similar type of sensation and we're talking about minor differences between of, of the same flavor type so i hope that somehow helps next question is does the supernote support svg exporting i want to create a sketch drawing and use cutting machine like circuit maker to cut my creation out uh, directly no it doesn't support it but what you can do is you can go and export a your handwritten uh, uh thing so if i click on export and you can select which page or pages you want to export you can select the pdf then you can go export then you can choose vector so it's uh and once it's exported as a vector those vectors are selectable you can select them in the pdf and then you can get them out of the pdf that way right so it doesn't give you an svg directly but it does give you the vector data in the form of vector pdf Next one is, how well does Kindle app run on this? This being the A6X2. This is me just loading my uh, one of the texts here. And this is basically how it works. And the thing is that you, uh, the problem with the app is that it's trying to do that stupid animation thing. Even if I actually go into here, and I want to, 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 to let's see, uh, find, uh, I believe it's in more. And then I swipe up. Yeah, so page turn animation is off, right? But it's still doing it. And that is a problem with the app itself that it's not actually optimized and it's trying to do those uh, animations so that in itself is not really great so the perf that hinders the performance but if it wasn't for that then it would actually work really really well and other than that I, I, as well it, it, it just works properly like any android uh, Kindle app does. Of course, you have the dark mode and the themes and everything. Now, the other thing that's also important to note is that if I, for example, load uh, a comic book and I keep the animations turned off, then it actually makes a difference because my initial testing was uh, very slow between panels especially when looking at uh, reading a comic book like this but now with the animations turned off 
that actually works in comics. And you can see just how much faster it actually is than with the plain text. So that is a problem with the, and of course you can double tap and then you can see them uh, side by side in the landscape mode or it will automatically understand, hey, this is a portrait mode, so you get one page. And then if you, uh, there we go, there was another, here he wants to do animations and you can just see how slowed all of that is. But if I double tap on this one and actually start going like this, then there's no more animations and it's simply fading between the different uh, panels. So how does the Kindle, Kindle work on this? It works, absolutely. I didn't have it crash. I didn't have any problems opening or anything. The only thing that you do have is speed wise and it's in relation to that page turning animations that simply are being ignored due to the Kindle app, how it actually works. And one more note, this is actually an outdated uh, Kindle app version. So they should definitely update the version that is offered on their Supernote app so that it's more current. Hi, thank you for your video question. Do any organizational templates or calendar templates come pre-installed? Uh, also can we customize the sleep screen and or off the screen? Um, you get the templates, uh, regular templates for backgrounds for the, uh, uh, and you have a lot of them, lot to choose from. So these are the ones that you can choose from. But I don't know what do you mean about calendar templates and stuff. If you mean hyperlinked calendars and things like that, that that's not a template. Um, that's actually an entire organizer or something like that. And that's, uh, that, no, you don't get anything like that. But you can get it at mydeepguy.com slash schlop. schlop. <laughs> not schlop, shop. Uh, but you do get these templates to use as your backgrounds for your notebooks, plus the accessibility of uh, using your own drawings or whatever, uploading your own templates and just using them easily as your own because you have these categories as underline, square, specialization, and then customization. You can easily upload your own PNGs and use them as the um, as templates as well, which is really, really good. The additional thing that Supernote has is that you can load any hyperlinked PDF file and use it actually as a template. So you get MDO, My Daily Organizer, or MMP, My Deep Guide Meeting Planner, and you want to take advantage of all of the powerful tools that Supernote has in its note-taking, such as linking uh, titles and things like that, then uh, you can actually put the PDF file in my styles folder, and I have a dedicated video on that. You can check it out uh, yeah, up here probably, and then use a hyperlinked PDF file as a template for your entire notebook, which no other system does. And it's absolutely insane how good and powerful that is. So yeah, it doesn't come pre-installed with such powers, but you can easily use it and it gives you the opportunity to do so. Um, of course, yes, you can use your custom uh, drawings or whatever it is that you want as your sleep uh, um, uh, screens or power off screens. So this is a doodle that I did. Uh, on the Supernote A6X yesterday, and I just liked how Bender turned out, so I decided to use it as my sleep screen on the Note, uh, Supernote A6X2. Um, I pre-ordered mine and I'm waiting on it being shipped, but it is my first e-ink and I haven't found info on the battery life. I have a Kindle and it lasts forever. What about this one? Thanks for the video and happy holidays for Rome, Puerto Rico. Happy holidays to you too. Um, yeah, I'm still in the middle of doing all the tests, but I did do the battery tests and the battery is pretty much exactly the same like with the A6X, which is really, really cool because this one has a slightly smaller battery, but it's has the same battery life. So that's really cool to see. And what does that mean? Well, that means that you get around 10 hours of continuous writing with Wi-Fi on um, for both measurements and for continuous reading time. It's like you, you get like 25 hours or more of continuously reading and flipping pages every 20 seconds, right? So in reality, that means that this should last for a very, very long time. But it will, of course, depend on your use case scenarios, whether you're not 
you use Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, how you use it, what type of Wi-Fi you have. Does it force the device to constantly try and find the signal if it's because if you have a weak Wi-Fi signal, that's going to force the device to actually scan more and try to get more out of it. And and that's going to drain the battery more, etc, etc. So, yeah, it really depends on the use case scenarios. But the core uh, system is very frugal and it's really, really efficient. I wish you could do a review on the Inkpad Color 3 version they have now. Yeah, um, I'm not going to be covering Inkpad uh, pocketbook devices uh, that much because there's very, very little interest in them uh, in these devices. And generally speaking, they are they're great for reading stuff, but they're very generic. So there's nothing really bad about them. I'm just kind of thinking like, why wouldn't you go with the Kindle or a Kobo? Why specifically pocketbook? But if there is a specific reason why you would like a pocketbook for its environment or whatever, then usually they've been a really good uh, e-reader type of device, but not a note taker uh, kind of thing. So yeah, the portable ones are kind of fine, but rather uh, meh. So yeah, I'm not going to be covering those on the channel that much. There is another question that says I'm interested in the books tab X, particularly if it allows two features. Number one, uh, ability to insert a blank page into a PDF, for example, Voyage MDO, as if shown in the first question in this video. Yes, you can do it, but uh, you need to be aware of the synchronization limitations that they currently have. And the second one is infinite pages when uh, there's not infinite pages. That's not that's infinite scrolling uh, but anyway infinite pages where you can scroll down on a blank page and make it longer and longer as you write are these features available on the books tab X so inserting a blank page yes um, infinite infinite page no uh, what you do have is you have the ability to have the canvas be twice as long so what you can have is that you can have it twice as tall or twice as wide or twice as long and uh, tall, but that's pretty much it. And the controls are very clunky and it's not automatic. So it's something that you have to set up manually and then it will work. So yeah. Next one is I'm thinking the new sync process will make it easier for people with two super notes to match them all up versus the tricky process you uh, you now have to do to avoid losing work. I agree there should be options within that though. I totally agree as well and I think that the auto sync is an excellent uh, addition for it to work but there are two problems right now that people have to be aware of and that is that if you have uh, version 2.11 and you on your let's say supernote a6x and then you get an a6x2 or let's say a5x is on version os version 211 and you have the a6x2 updated to 313 or 314 which is its latest version um a6x2 is not going to have any problems to synchronize and get the data from uh, that you already made. That's fine. But if you make a new notebook on the A6X2 or the newer operating system and you want to synchronize that back to your older A5X, which is on 2.11, your A5X is going to, or your 2.11 system is going to say, this notebook is made by a newer operating system. Please update the operating system for its support. So I'm waiting on a confirmation to actually see if, uh, if when updated to 2.12, that's going to be resolved or when is this 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 synchronicity going to be uh yeah kind of uh, uh synchronized and when it's all going to work so you need to be aware of these limitations regarding the synchronization so if you have an older system to a newer system works but um yeah newer system to an older system uh, doesn't currently work so that's that's a big deal and the second one is yeah I, I maintain that it's extremely important to have an option to manually choose which files will be excluded from the auto sync that's all that it needs and then I think uh, things are going to be pretty much fine and dandy and the final question not for the super note a6 x2 it's actually about the um uh libra 2 uh kobo libra 2 i'd like a waterproof e-reader with buttons um is this still the best out of bunch that meets the criteria seems like it to me either the libra 2 
or H2O if I can find one. And I would agree. I mean, if I was looking for one, I would definitely go for either the Libre 2 or preferably I would go for the H2O because I had my H2O for, for a long time and I loved it. I really, really did. Libre 2 is a little bit chunkier. It feels, it, it's not as nice and the buttons were not as nice. So for me, uh, H2O, if you can find one, that, that's an excellent one. And especially if you could find a second one, second hand one, which is in a good condition at a good price, that's, that's, yeah, you can't really go wrong with that choice. Well, okay, so that's it for 2023 and Q&As. However, 2024 is just around the corner, so please do leave your questions for the next Q&A sessions in the comments down below. And do let me know if, uh, yeah, if there's anything in regards like a follow-up question or something like that. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.